Well, once again, everyone, welcome to our webinar on Geomatica 2016. And uh, we're pleased to have you with us here today. We'll be spending uh, probably the next hour together to uh, review the uh, latest and greatest release, uh, Geomatica 2016, which has just been released uh, a few days ago. Um, the uh, key points that uh, we're going to be covering today include the fact that uh, with Geomatica 2016, we continue to provide value to our existing customers by having a regular release on an annual basis. This makes uh, uh, probably the uh, third or fourth release on an annual basis since 2012 when we uh, started to release this this way. In addition to several releases where we have service packs where additional functionality is added into the software. We continue to provide additional value through the new product releases, uh, chief, in, including uh, in this case uh, enhancements with regards to uh, digital surface model extraction, uh, new satellite and air photo sensors, and just in general, a lot of new capability to make it easier to work with uh, Geomatica. So if we go to just the next slide for a quick uh, mention of logistics, the uh, lines are muted during the presentation. This is so that you can speak amongst each other if you choose to do so, if you're in a room with several people. And uh, go ahead and type your questions uh, throughout the session in the questions panel. And uh, you can also raise your hand if you'd like to speak directly to the uh, panelists, myself and Jean, who you'll meet in a minute, uh, are on the line and are also monitoring the chat. So if you have a question, you can send us a, a question that way. And we are recording the session, so uh, you'll be getting a, a link to the recording probably within the next uh, day. And uh, you can review some material or send it to some colleagues. Uh, but uh, stick around because the interaction with the people uh, live is, is uh, happening right now. So just a few quick words on who's presenting today. Myself on the right, Kevin Jones. So I'm the Director of Marketing at PCI Geomatics. I've been with the company for about uh, six years now. And I uh, have a background in remote sensing and uh, both from the data provider side of things and also from uh, software now having worked at PCI for a number of years. And uh, the main presenter today is uh, Jean-Sébastien Bouffard. Jean is a technical solutions specialist. And uh, what that means is essentially uh, he helps our customers be successful uh, with the business challenges that they have on a day-to-day -day basis. So he helps them to understand uh, whether there's a fit with our technology. And uh, he has uh, expertise and uh, background in remote sensing uh, that allows him to do that and also a deep knowledge of our technology. So Jean is going to be walking you through the uh, uh, additions to Geomatica 2016 and uh, what it is that uh, we are offering. So just a quick contextual overview on PCI Geomatics so that uh, uh, for those of you maybe who uh, are not familiar with the company, perhaps you're here the first time. Uh, PCI is a Canadian company. We've, uh, we've, been, uh, we've existed since uh, 1982, so com coming in on uh, 34 years, 35 years almost. And uh, we, we offer desktop software in addition to enterprise level software. And the, what you see on this slide is, a, uh, is really the, the breadth uh, of the offering that we, that we have. Everything from uh, individual image analysis for working with a few images to high volume production uh, on the right. So we have the Geomatica desktop software and the GXL, which is our high volume production system. And in the middle, we have the Geomatica developer edition, which uh, you see the Python icon in there. So across our technology stack, we actually make use of Python to enable you to automate workflows and extend the capability of Geomatica with other software packages that you may be using. For example, ArcGIS or uh, open source software or uh, and any other tools that you might be making um, use of uh, for an integrated solution for your particular internal or external user. And what this, this, uh, this offering is, is what we like to refer to as the Geomatica platform. It's really a set of tools upon which you can build uh, specific solutions for your internal customers that might be very specific to uh, a workflow for imagery or it could be more general in terms of extracting information and delivering information to an end user. And the offering allows us to um, 
have a wide uh, amount of, of flexibility and scalability. So uh, as volume requirements go up or as uh, the, the number of uh, processing increases, uh, the definitely the technology is uh, is there and is available to scale up and down depending on your requirements. So before we get going with the actual demonstration, we, we always like to hear from you and to uh, understand who's in the room and um, what what your specific interest is. Um, so we're going to launch a, uh, a quick little poll here and uh, we're wondering uh, why you're here today. Are you here to uh, see specific technology that we'll be featuring in our, in our uh, webinar? So if you could uh, take a few moments to answer the, the poll. Um, are you interested to see the new DM extraction? Is it the uh, automated color balancing and interactive color balancing, the changes to SAR? such as the compact poem tree, the new sensor, in, in this case ADS, uh, or maybe you're here for the developer tools. Uh, and you can select more than one, so uh, I'll leave that open for uh, a few more minutes, or sorry, a few more moments uh, while, while you give us some feedback. Um, as you know, Geomatica is a very broad technology that offers um, solutions for satellite and air photo, and uh, we have a lot of different uh, moving parts. So. These are some of the highlights that you're going to hear about today, and we're curious to see what your interest is. So I'll just leave that open for another three seconds. Three, two, one. Thank you. And I'll just quickly share that result with you so you can see what people are interested in. So it looks like a lot of you are um, interested in seeing the DM extraction, the color balancing, and, and some of you are also here for, for other uh, features what we're, we're including in this release. So with that, I'll uh, hand over to Jean, who is going to walk you through some of the highlights from the uh, release. Go ahead, Jean. Well, thank you for that introduction, Kevin. And good afternoon to everyone. I'm really happy that you could attend this webinar today to learn about what's new with Geomatica 2016. So starting off with sensor support, with every new release of Geomatica, we always add a series of new sensors. And with this release, we, we're now supporting seven new sensors, whether it's ad core support, photogrammetric support, or both. So going through those sensors, there we go. The first two some sensors we now support are Deimos-1 and Deimos-2. Those are two high-resolution mini-satellites for Earth observation by Elecnor Deimos. So for both these sensors, we're providing at core and photogrammetric support. So this allows users like yourself to ingest DMOS imagery into Geomatica, and you, from Geomatica you're able to use our advanced atmosphere correction and photogrammetric capabilities. So for example, here we have a scene with a little haze. So using at core, you could significantly reduce or remove the haze from the imagery. And showing another example with our photogrammetric capabilities, with DAMOS, DAMOS has the ability to be pan sharpened because it provides both a multispectral and panchromatic image. So here we have an example of the pan sharpened DAMOS imagery. So the next sensor that we support in Geomatica 2016 is Theos. And Theos is a Earth observation satellite operated by the Thailand Space Agency, JISTA. Now we've already uh, provided photogrammetric support in previous versions of Geomatica, but with 2016 we went further and we now provide AdCore support. So once again, users can perform um, haze correction using our AdCore capabilities. So for example, right here we have a hazy scene, and using AdCore, this is what we're able to get with that technology. Now moving into SAR, Right here we have Pulsar 2, our phase array L-Ban synthetic aperture radar number two. And this is a SAR satellite from JAXA that supports compact polarization, which we also now support compact polarimetry in Geomatica 2016. And I'll talk about that in a few slides from here. So with Pulsar 2, we're providing photogrammetric support. So basically, we're providing the ability to easily ingest your Pulsar imagery, orthorectify it, so you're in a position to be able to perform meaningful uh, analysis afterwards. Next we have TripleSat. Now 
TripleSat is a uh, three satellite constellation that provides higher resolution imagery. And it's a constellation operated and maintained by 21AT. So providing photogrammetric support for TripleSat, this includes point measurement, orthorectification, mosaic et etc. Et now the last uh, satellite that we support is GALFIN-2, and this is a high-resolution Earth observation satellite by CNSA. And with GALFIN-2, well, in previous years we've added photogrammetric support, but in this iteration we now provide AdCore support. So moving from satellite to aerial, in Geomatica 2016, we've added ADS support. And ADS is a push broom uh, airborne, scanser, airborne sensor by Leica. So users now have the capability to ingest their ADS 40, 80, and 100 imagery, and they can process it from end to end in Geomatica. So now that we've included ADS, we really have a well-rounded and robust uh, support for all airborne cameras and sensors supporting all the major cameras like UltraCam, DMC, ADS, etc. So moving on to compact polarimetry, here I'd like to present a set of features that we've added for compact pulsar imagery. So for those of you who are not familiar with compact polarimetry or not very familiar with SAR, compact polarimetry is basically when a SAR sensor uh, only transmits one signal, but it receives two signals in return. And the purpose of doing this is really uh, multifaceted. So for one, by doing this, it allows the sensor to capture a larger spatial extent. It also reduces the overall cost of operation in comparison to full quad sensors. It also requires less energy to transmit than full quad. And as a result, it extends the life of the satellites and really, there are many more reasons why compact polarimetry is of interest to both industry and academia. So in Geomatica 2016, we've introduced a new set of tools to make use of compact polarimetry. So here we have a list of existing and planned compact polarimetry SAR sensors. So at the top of the list, we have RISAT-1, which we already support. And in Geomatica 2016, like I previously mentioned, we now support Pulsar-2. So there are currently two compact polarimetry sensors that we support, but we also plan on supporting SALCOM and the RadarSat Constellation mission when available. So in the near future, we plan on supporting all the main compact polarimetry sensors when they're available, offering you, our users, as many options as possible. So here we have a list of the compact polarimetry tools available in Geomatica 2016. So to highlight a couple, we have, uh, PS ComDisk, for example, and that's a tool that generates decomposition parameters for compact pole imagery that are similar to the Claude Pazzi decomposition method found for full quad imagery. Then we have the PS Recons tool, and that allows users to construct a simulated full quad image from their compact pole imagery. So when it comes down to it, we provide users with a couple of options here. You can either process your compact pole imagery directly or you can simulate a full quad image and use our existing set of tools for full quad star imagery to conduct analysis. So you have choices. So next, I'd like to get into uh, aerial triangulation and ortho engine. And in the past years here at PCI, we've been making significant improvements uh, to this area in our technology. And this is really important because having good aerial triangulation is the foundation of any photogrammetric project. Uh, it allows you to achieve very good orthorectification results, surface model extraction, and allows you to perform very high, um, high quality mosaicing jobs. So we've, in, we've made improvements to the math and to the interface to help the user, you, get the best results that you can from our software. So here are some of the new aerial triangulation features in Geomatica 2016. And I'm going to go through each one of them one by one. So the first thing I'd like to present is new triangulation methods that we've added. So in addition to our uh, traditional approach to performing bundle adjustment, we've added five new methods. So the first method we added is the enforced fitting method. And this method is very similar to how we currently perform bundle adjustment, with the exception that 
the ground control points that you've added to your project are going to be more, are be are going to have higher weights when it comes time to model computation. So they're going to have a greater influence on the computed results. The next method we added is the relative absolute orientation. And this is a two-step process uh, for bundle adjustment. So during the first step, what happens, only the tie points are included in the bundle adjustment. Then in the second step, the ground control points are then included with the tie points and we're performing an absolute orientation. And along with this method, you have a, different, a number of different options that you can choose from based on the amount of parameters that you want to use. Next, we have the relative and the absolute orientation. So the, they're the, both the same as the above, but you have the option to uh, apply them separately. And the last method we have is free network adjustment. And basically, the free network adjustment allows you to perform a bundle adjustment pretty much without any weight, so there's no limit on the model in regards to uh, the position and the orientation of the image, of the camera position when the image is acquired. So, here we have an example of two different methods that were used to compute the same project. So you'll notice that there's a slight difference in the RMS value right here. Now there's not much of a difference for this example, but for other examples there may be more for different types of projects. So it's important to know that there isn't one method that's optimal for all circumstances. It really depends on the project that you're working for, working on. So the value of having all these options right here is that it provides you, the user, with more flexibility to compute better positional and orientation information for your images. Now the next improved feature I want to talk about is tie point collection. And we've improved tie point collection in four manners. So the first way, the first manner in which we improve tie point collection has to do with accuracy. And we've improved the accuracy of tie point collection by uh, performing better image matching. So better pixel to pixel matching between the images. So fewer blunders, better results. Next, we've improved the connectivity of tie points between all overlapping images, providing much deeper multi-way tie points. And this, in turn, provides improved model computations, lower RMS values, and improves simply, the, simply improves the overall quality of your projects. Then we have distribution. So focusing on tie point dispersion right here. So in the diagram right here, you'll see that I have these tie points um, in red. And these tie points are considered redundant due to their proximity to other tie points and their negligible, their negligible benefit to the overall model. So now we've removed those tie points by improving the math. And reiterating the previous point that I talked about, connectivity, we're now getting deeper multi-way tie points. So instead of having two points side by side, and each point is connecting three, uh, two images, we now have only one tie point in that area, and it's collecting all, it's tied to all three images. So better distribution, better model calculations, and increase deeper uh, multi-way tie points. And last but not least, our tie point collection uh, technology is now 20% faster than previous versions of Geomatica. So the next improvement we've made for error triangulation in OrthoEngine uh, has to do with our error reporting. And this is something that was requested by our customers. So we've improved the residual error panel for error reporting in OrthoEngine, and we've done this in three ways. So the first thing we've done, we've added the ability to view the ZRMS, so the root mean square error of the elevation value for your ground control points, your checkpoints, and your tie points. We've also added the standard deviation and the bias for your GCPs, your checkpoints, and your tie points for both your horizontal and your vertical accuracy. And the last feature we've added in the residual error panel is this method to quickly eliminate bad points, so points with a high RMS value. So you now have the ability to quickly select a number of bad points and remove them from your project. So the value of all these features is that they provide the means to um, 
more efficiently reduce your RMS error, and subsequently improve the quality of your projects in Ortho Engine. So the next feature is a completely new one, and it's a new feature that helps user, uh, users manage images and take on difficult projects. And it's this new concept that we've introduced of image deactivation. So if image deactivation, you can put aside, easily put aside images in your project by simply deactivating them. Now why would you want to do this? Well, by doing this, you can quickly remove images or put images off to the side and exclude them from jobs like uh, point collection, like tie point or ground control point collection, from bundle adjustment, ortho rectification, and any other job in ortho engine. The, also, image deactivation allows you to quickly weed out bad images. So remove images from your project that are uh, detrimental or duplicates are just unwanted. And finally, the image deactivation functionality also helps you to work on difficult projects. So projects where the initial inputs were not very good. And to sort of achieve good results, you need to start off on a smaller subset and then iteratively add more and more images to your block. So you can easily do this with the image deactivation functionality. And it's very easy to use. So for example, all you need to do in the project overview is select a number of images, right click in the table of contents, and click deactivate images. And then your images are deactivated from your project. And you can simply <clears throat> repeat the same process and reactivate them. So in addition to what I just presented, we've also made a series of smaller updates to ortho engines. And one of them is the ability to save and open camera models that you use quite often. So this is great because this avoids having to look for your camera parameters and re-entering the same information every time you start a new ortho engine project. So now in ortho engine, you could save your camera models after you enter them the first time and then reopen them every time afterwards. Next, we've added the capability to read exit tags from images. So when you add images to your ortho engine project, if there's exit information in those images, that information is going to be read automatically. And two things are going to happen. One, it's going to populate the exterior orientation with the X, Y, Z position from the exit tags. And then using that information, it's going to compute the kappa value. And the second thing that's going to happen the UTM projection and the spatial, re spatial resolution are going to be set. And the third update right here is we've now made it more flexible uh, to compute your flight lines. So we've modified or we've exposed the break angle, and that's the angle that's used to determine when a flight line ends and when a new one begins. So being able to modify that value, you could easily manipulate how your flight lines are computed. So those are the three small updates we've made to Ortho Engine. So we're going to take a quick break and uh, do our second poll. Kevin? Great. Thanks, John. That looks uh, uh, very interesting, all those new highlights. Uh, John's going to be going into uh, a demonstration in a minute here. He's going to show you some results uh, or some, some image galleries on, on different uh, new technology. Um, so before he does that, let me just open up the second poll. We'd like to know if you're a current customer or if you're using uh, perhaps technology that's available from one of our competitors or something that we don't know about. Um, there, there are some traditional uh, software packages there, desktop image processing packages that are well known. Uh, in addition to a little bit of a focus on the aerial market, we, uh, we're adding more and more capability as it relates to air photo correction and air photo uh, aerial uh, workflows uh, with UltraCam and uh, ADS as you're, as you're seeing today. So. Uh, we have some great tools that can actually uh, do a lot in terms of replacing Photoshop. If some of you are uh, doing uh, cosmetic touch-ups in Photoshop, we actually have some great tools for, for doing that in Geomatica. Um, so I'll just shut that down in three seconds, and uh, thank you very much for participating in that. So three, two, one, thanks a lot. And uh, Jean, at this point, is going to walk you through 
uh, some examples of uh, what he's been talking about on DSM extraction and some of the other technology. So back to you, Jean. All right, thank you, Kevin. So welcome back. So the next section, like Kevin said, is going to be on DM extraction. Now here at PCI, we've been investing a lot in our DM extraction technology over the last few years. And we've made significant progress when it comes to DM extraction. And we intend on continuing on making progress. So looking at what we've done in 2016, uh, we've improved the overall quality of our DMs. And we've also improved the ability to extract sharp one-to-one -one resolution DMs. And last, we've reduced the amount of time required to extract DMs. So having a look at the results right here, um, on the left, we have a DSM that was extracted using previous versions of Geomatica. And on the right, we have a DSM that was used using Geomatica 2016. So if you could look right here at the river, you'll notice that in the previous versions, there was difficulties extracting a water surface. And in 2016, that water surface was smoothly extracted in the DSM. So we've made quite a bit of improvements to extracting a DSMs or surface models over water surfaces. Next, if you look at this cross-shaped building right here, you'll notice that in 2016, the edges of the building are much nicer and are very smooth in, in comparison to our previous versions. So with our extracted DSMs, uh, those are two areas where we've made improvements. How buildings are delineated in our DSMs and how water surfaces are extracted. So continuing with um, buildings, here we have an example of how nicely extracted this building is right here. And if you look along the edge right here, you'll notice that you have uh, <clears throat> an occluded region. And despite this occlusion in the imagery, we have a very nice sharp uh, building wall right here that was extracted. So once again, just highlighting how nicely we could extract buildings uh, from our imagery. So improvements to our technology also includes the ability to manage more challenging environments. So right here, we have an area of low contrast. So DM extraction over areas of low contrast can be a difficult task. But here we have a perfectly extracted DM in a mountainous region of Greenland where the ground was completely covered by snow and that results in a very low contrast but yet we have a nicely extracted DSM. So moving on from quality to one-to-one -to -one, uh, DSM extraction, in Geomatica 2016 uh, we've really improved this functionality and it's now uh, reached a level of consistency in producing high quality and very high detailed DMs. So for example, here we have a 50 centimeter satellite scene. And here you can see the extracted 50 centimeter surface model from that satellite scene. So it's truly impressive, transferring the most detail we can from our images to our DEMs. Another example of one-to-one -one before I move on to a gallery. Here we have an aerial data set, uh, a DMC, an image from a DMC camera. And the resolution of this imagery right here is 10 centimeters. And from this imagery, I was able to extract a 10 centimeter surface model. Now, once again, the amount of detail that's captured in this 10 centimeter uh, DSM provides a lot of information that can be used for analysis. Okay, so we're gonna break away from PowerPoint for a second and we're gonna look at some actual results in focus. So I'm gonna bring up focus. I'm gonna open my DM editor. And we're going to look at this first DSM right here. So right here we have an area with a lot of vegetation. I'll just flick around off so you can see. And with all this vegetation, we were still able to extract, extract a really sharp, sharp DSM. So if I could draw your attention right here, you can see that you have a path. And in the DSM, that path is nicely carved into the terrain. So just showing how we're able to capture a lot of detail from the imagery. And now if you look right here at the stream, you can see that in areas where there's very low current in the stream, the water surface is really nicely extracted. So yeah, this DSM right here includes a lot of detail 
that's would be valuable for an array of different applications and specifically when it comes to applications uh, in hydrology or ecology with this type of landscape. So the next DSM I want to bring up is an urban environment. So if we have a look at this DSM right here, this is a DSM that was extracted at one-to-one -one resolution. So it was extracted from a DMC camera and the image was had a ground sampling distance of 10 centimeters. And you'll notice that this DSM right here is exceptionally well extracted. So if you look at all the buildings right here, and I flicker on and off, you'll notice that the buildings are very well defined. There's a fair amount of detail that you could spot on the roofs. And the walls of the building are very sharp, even in zones of occlusion. And that, another area I'd like to show you is right here, this mall. Once again, you have a lot of detail on the rooftop. So right here, you can see the pipelines, you can see air conditioning units, uh, you can see details in the windows. Along to the side of the building in the parking lot, you can see all the extracted cars. So there's a tremendous amount of detail in this DSM. And that's the sort of detail that you could achieve with one-to-one -one, uh, DSM extraction with uh, air photos. So another example that I have for you right here is a DSM that was generated from spot six imagery. So we had two stereo spot six scenes. And what I like about this uh, DSM right here, it, the mountainous relief is really well represented in this DSM. So if you look at the peaks and the ridges, they're actually very beautifully captured in the DSM along with the stream network that flows between uh, the ridges and the mountain. And they're finely carved into the DSM. So really this is simply a beautiful DSM that we're able to extract. So one last DSM I'd like to show you. It's another example that was captured or extracted from DMC imagery. So another one-to-one -one, uh, resolution. So this is a 10 centimeter DSM. And what I like about this DSM right here is how well it captures all these stockpiles, specifically the stockpile along the quarry wall right here. So you can see right here you have this large stockpile, then you have all these smaller stockpiles. If you look at the DSM, they're very well captured. Also, what's kind of fun with this level of uh, sp spatial resolution, or ground sampling distance, you get a lot of detail even from vehicles. So right here you can see that the bucket is empty in the truck. So once again, you're able to capture a lot of information with one-to-one -one extracted DSMs. So going back to PowerPoint, the last thing we've done um, with our DSMs We've um, improved the whole process. We've um, reduced the amount of time it takes to extract a DSM from imagery. So we've improved that capability, uh, and it's now two to four times faster than in previous years. So this is important because extracting a surface model can be a timely task. So these improvements are very valuable and well received. Okay. So the last set of new features I would like to present are those related to our mosaicing and color balancing capabilities, which is one of our leading technologies that we'll continue to develop in the coming years. And recent improvements to our mosaicing and color balancing capabilities have completely reshaped our technology, uh, producing truly awe-inspiring results. So to continue with many of the new features added previous year, in 2016, we've added three new features that help you produce higher quality orthomosaics. And those features are uh, local contrast adjustment using dodging points, interactive automatic color balancing with dodging points as well, and exposure correction with the Smart Geofill tool. So starting off with local contrast adjustment, prior to 2016, when you were using dodging points, you were only able to modify 
brightness, the pixel values brightness using dodging points. But now in 2016, we've included the ability to modify both the brightness and the contrast values of your image pixels using dodging points. So here's an example of uh, being able to now modify the contrast of an image with a dodging point. So here on the left, we have an image that the contrast is a little high. And as a result, we're not getting the most from our imagery, and it's difficult to interpret. So with the ability to now modify contrast with dodging points, I can simply add a dodging point to my image and easily lower the, con the contrast in that image. So if you look at the image on the right right here, that's exactly what I did. I added a dodging point to my image, and I simply lowered the contrast. And now the image is much easier to interpret, and you can get more detail from your imagery. So with the ability to adjust both the brightness and the contrast using dodging points, there's a lot more you can do to achieve better color balancing results. Next, we have the new interactive automatic color, balance, color balancing functionality for dodging points. And this feature, in my opinion, is absolutely amazing. It is truly a time saver. So this new feature allows you to quickly perform color balancing along seam lines by automatically determining the optimal brightness and contrast levels for you. So previously, <clears throat> if you were using dodging points, let's say a certain task would take you maybe 30 minutes to complete. With these new features right here, this auto match feature, that 30 minute task could easily be reduced to five to 10 minutes. It is an extremely convenient feature and tool for um, performing color balancing. So with this new feature, there are three approaches to how to perform interactive automatic color balancing. The first one is auto match to both sides, which performs color balancing by matching the statistics of both images that share the same seam line and blending them together. Then we have auto match the single side. And this method, basically what it does, as soon as you drop a dodging point on a seam line, it's gonna take the color balancing statistics from one image and apply them to the adjacent image and color balance them so there's a seamless transition between the two of them. And the third method is auto match the statistics and this method is a little different. Uh, it basically, you collect statistics manually from a region that you like, and you can apply uh, the color balancing of that region wherever you drop a dodging point. So looking at these methods in more detail, here on the left we have the auto match to both sides. So like I said, when you drop a dodging point on your seam line with this method right here, what's gonna happen that's going to automatically gather the statistics from both images and match the color balancing statistics together, and then you'll get a seamless transition between both images. And the same thing occurs on the right, except that with the auto match to single side, it's only going to take the color balance statistics from one image, and then when you drop your dodging point, it's going to automatically color balance uh, the image for you using the statistics of the other image. And as you can see, you get a seamless transition between both imagery. So in both cases, all that was required was to simply place a dodging point, and all of that was done automatically for you. So the third method is auto match to statistics. And this method is a little different. So if you look at the image on the left right here, you'll notice that on the left side, the pixels are a little hazy, are a little brighter. So what I'm gonna do I collected statistics, color balance statistics right here on the right side of the image where it's a little darker. And then I simply dropped a dodging point with the auto match the statistics option and it automatically color balance this region right here to match the right side of the image. So to give you an example of all these features working together, um, here I'm gonna give you a demonstration. And what we have right here is a challenging color balancing task. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna color balance these three images right here, specifically in the water. So quite often, for those of you who've done a lot of color balancing, you'll know that uh, getting a seamless transition in, on water surfaces is very difficult. 
but I'm going to show you how easy it is with the new auto match uh, functionality. So the first thing I did was simply drop dodging points along the seam line of my image with the auto match the single side option. The reason why I did that is because I wanted the nice dark blue water right here to be applied to my two other images. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to darken the water in this lower portion right here because it's still a little bright, a little hazy. So to do that, all I, I simply need to collect statistics from a region of the image where you have nice dark blue water and then I simply need to add floating dodging points and it's automatically going to apply the statistics that I collected from that one region to wherever I drop my dodging points. So if we, if we have a look at the before and after, on the left you could see that my top image right here was very dark, the lower image was very bright and then the upper right image right here was a mixture between bright and dark. And if you look at the results on the right, you can see that we have a seamless transition and I was able to get this nice dark blue water that was that's sort of ubiquitous in this water region right here. So as you can see with Geomatica 2016, we really offer a powerful set of tools that can easily handle even the most difficult of color balancing tasks. So I'm going to break out of PowerPoint again. And I'm going to reiterate that example live to show you how easy it is to achieve those results. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select my image right here. I'm going to select an edge dodging point, which is a dodging point that's going to automatically snap to my seam line. I'm going to select the auto match the single side, and I'm simply going to drop the dodging point along the seam line. And as you can see, it's automatically uh, color balancing my images is truly effortless. Now I'm going to select this image right here and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to drop a few more points. There we go. And now what I want to do, I want to collect statistics from this nice dark blue water region right here and apply it to this bright area. So to do that, I'm simply going to select the Store Statistics tool, highlight a region that I like. I'm going to select a floating dodging point, and that's a dodging point that you could add anywhere in the image. I'm going to select Auto Match Statistics, and I'm simply going to drop those dodging points in my image. And you can see that it's automatically applying the color balancing to those regions. There we go. So let me remove those dodging points. So now if you look at the results, you can see that they're quite, the water is perfectly seamless right here. And I was able to apply that nice dark blue water to wherever I applied, I dropped dodging points. So that's how easy it is. It's truly an effortless task. And this is a task that often people would have to go to other software to complete. But now in Geomatica, you could easily perform these tasks yourself with our software, saving you a lot of time. Okay. So the last feature I want to present is the addition of exposure correction to our Smart GeoFill tool. And this basically provides the ability to perform both underexposed and overexposed corrections. So you could uh, lighten darker pixels or darken light pixels. And this is all done on the fly with the Smart GeoFill tool. And more importantly, this is you're able to use this tool to apply to perform localized exposure correction. So previously in 2015, we had a tool that performed um, exposure correction, but it applied the exposure correction globally throughout the image. So what's important with this new tool, you're able to apply exposure correction to a localized area. 
So here we have an example. So you'll notice that along this airport right here, I've delineated a boundary with a polygon. And this area right here is where I want to perform exposure correction. And the reason why I want to perform exposure correction on this airport is because the pixels are very bright. And as a result, it's difficult to interpret a lot of the features of the airport. And we miss out on a lot of the details that are available. So with the Smart Geofill tool, I can easily perform exposure correction. And you'll notice that it's contained to this one area right here within the boundary. And by performing this exposure correction, it's much easier now to interpret pardon me, the area, uh, the airport, all the features in the airport. So it's much easier to see the planes in the airport and all the other, uh, all the other features. And last but not least, I'm very proud to say that over 100 customer requests have been addressed uh, since Geomatica 2015 SP1. Uh, we truly take your feedback to heart, and yeah, I'm very proud to say over 100 requests have been addressed. So that completes my portion of the presentation now. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and let's move on to our third poll. Kevin? Great. Thanks so much, John. Uh, that was a really nice uh, demonstration. Hopefully people got a sense of the... Uh, uh, the ability to use Geomatica to replace Photoshop for certain tasks when it comes to uh, satellite and air photo uh, ortho mosaicing uh, in terms of the color balancing for the water and some of those other uh, seam lines that were corrected uh, in, in quite a nice way there. Um, so our, our final poll relates to uh, whether you are, I guess, suitably impressed. Um, so we'd like to know if, uh, if this is something that you uh, that, that you see, uh, w whether you see this as a fitting with uh, your existing, maybe you're an existing customer and you saw some great stuff and you're interested to maybe keep your renewal up in terms of the software and up support and update, or maybe you're, um, you, you're thinking of adding some licenses for DM extraction uh, capability and so on. So let us know if you like what you saw. Uh, we'd just like to gauge uh, whether or not uh, uh, you'd be interested to find out more. So uh, definitely uh, some great capability. I know that uh, a lot of our top uh, developers and even our uh, CTO has been actively engaged in a lot of this uh, capability that you've seen here today. So, um, so I'll leave that open for just a few more moments and I'll, I'll shut it down in three, two, one. Thank you for uh, participating in that poll. Um, just a few kind of uh, remarks here before we go to the question and answer period. Um, we do have a trial version of Geomatica 2016 available on our website. If you're uh, currently using a previous version or if you're, using, if you're not using Geomatica and you'd like to try it out, we have a fully functioning 30-day trial available at uh, pcigeomatics.com slash geomatica. And a couple of other uh, tips here in terms of how to get help. So a lot of material available through our uh, various channels, uh, YouTube uh, channel, which is quite active. We have a lot of tutorial videos on there. Uh, we have uh, PDF style tutorials that you can follow step by step. Uh, but if, uh, if, if you want to engage directly with us, I strongly encourage you to register for our discussion forum, which is available both on the dev .pcigmatics.com uh, website as well as the support.pcigmatics.com website. Uh, both of those have uh, a lot of great material and resources that you can leverage to uh, learn uh, how to use Geomatica or, or improve your knowledge of Geomatica. And uh, we encourage you to, uh, uh, to, uh, to do that. Um, the, uh, there's been a few questions that have been coming in, so I'm going to go to that right now. If you do want to engage with us directly, if you'd like to speak with us, uh, just raise your hand. Uh, you do need to have a setup where you're either dialed in and you have a microphone. So those of you who are on a PC machine and you don't have a headset or anything like that, we won't, we won't be able to hear you. So, But if you want to speak to us directly, uh, by all means, raise your hand. Um, but at this point, I'll, uh, I'll go through a few of the questions. So. And, and I'll be passing uh, probably the first one over to Jean. Um, so Jean, one of the questions that we had uh, during your color balancing demonstration was whether we have the ability to 
correct images that have already been orthorectified. So I'm assuming here we're, we have a, a, an existing mosaic and maybe there's some problem areas within that mosaic. What, what could a customer do in that situation? Well, if you have existing ortho photos, uh, individual ortho photos, you could easily create a mosaic only project in ortho engine. But if you have a single mosaic, what you could do is simply add that mosaic to uh, focus and there's some color balancing capabilities in there. However, they are limited um, if you only have one image. So. Okay, great. Um, we have a question about uh, whether there's a detailed list of changes of available, um, and uh, I'll, I'll field that one. So if you head over to pcigmax.com slash geomatica, we have a what's new document, which uh, gives you the nitty gritty of all the latest and greatest features. You can read up on it. And also the best thing to do if you want to understand the, the uh, exact capabilities to read the technical specifications for the software for Geomatica Core and Prime and DM Extraction, uh, all of the different modules that are available, you can pull up a technical specification on each one of those packages and the latest and greatest capability will be um, summarized in great detail there in those documents. Um, we have a question regarding the, um, the use of Pulsar 2 stereo pairs. Um, I, I guess this relates to um, the, the support for Pulsar 2 in terms of stereo radiogrammetry um, and as well as uh, uh, Sentinel-1, whether SLC data is supported. There's, there's a multi-part question there relating to uh, Pulsar 2 and Sentinel-1. Uh, Jean, do you have any insights there? Uh, well, when it comes to uh, Pulsar 2 uh, radiogrammetry, radar I'm not 100% on this, but I do think we do support DSM generation, but I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure we do. And then when it comes to Sentinel-1 SLC, uh, I'm not exactly sure there. Okay. Maybe so, you're better at answering that, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> um, SLC data, I'm not 100% sure. So we'll, we'll follow up on all these questions uh, individually with you if we don't have the answers right here now. Uh, there was a few questions about the um, trial period, so some people are asking whether it's, uh, uh, if it's really 30 days or if it's only 15 days. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's 30 days. I, I haven't tried it myself lately, but we did implement a 30-day trial uh, a few years ago now, so that, that should be what, what is available now. Um, let's see, uh, we have another question here about um, uh, whether, I, I'm not sure if you can see the last one here uh, relating to ortho photos, uh, Jean. Do you, do you see the last question there that's on the panel right now? Uh, yes, I do see it. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> pardon me. If you could paraphrase the question first before yes. you answer. So, the question is, um, is it possible to use Geomatica ortho engine to correct both X, Y, and Z using a DM? And currently, our ortho rectification process, we are correcting both the X, Y, and the elevation using a DM. So yes. Okay. So I, I'm 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 guessing the uh, the question then related to uh, a translation um, uh, approaches, which which is what this this particular user is currently using, as opposed to a, a rubber sheeting or a proper warping of uh, all of the pixels where they belong to get a, a higher level of accuracy. Um, Sentinel-2, where do we stand with Sentinel-2? Question from uh, from someone on the panel right now. Uh, I'm not quite sure about Sentinel-2. I think we might have support in the future, in the near future, but I'm not 100% on that. Okay. I uh, just got a note here from one of the uh, uh, PCI folks who's on the line <laughs> and uh, uh, confirmation that it is, it is a high-priority sensor. We do realize that this is uh, data that is uh, freely available through the European Space Agency, and a lot of people are starting to leverage this open-source uh, free data. Um, and uh, we're working on it. It's a priority sensor for us, and more than likely what, what we'll see is that it will be available in our service pack for Geomatica 2016. So uh, at some point within, uh, within the, the next uh, months, we'll be uh, adding uh, Sentinel-2 support. Um, I'm not sure if there's any other questions. We've addressed most questions. Uh, there was something related to HAP. Um, 
we, we didn't talk specifically about HAP, but uh, HAP is a, a specific workflow that allows you to take historical air photos. Um, and the question from one of the uh, people on the uh, webinar was whether um, we're making any changes there, whether we're uh, putting it into, uh, in, into our offering. Um, and uh, essentially, uh, we don't have a specific update for this release uh, with regards to HAP, but uh, we'll follow up directly with, uh, with that person there um, for, for additional detail on, on the uh, historical air photo processing. Well, we're three minutes ahead of schedule, and uh, I think it's been a great session. I uh, really appreciate uh, all of you for taking the time to attend uh, our webinar today. We hope that you found it interesting, and uh, uh, hopefully you uh, saw some value. We are going to be uh, present in many uh, upcoming events. Uh, some of them are listed here on the screen, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, California, uh, will be, we'll be uh, very, very much present at the uh, ISPRS uh, conference. We're actually presenting four uh, uh, papers at that conference, um, as well as some other uh, meetings coming up in Germany and, uh, and Sri Lanka. Uh, th these are just some of the events. We are doing uh, many, many other events as well. So if you happen to be going to those events, we look forward to meeting you in person. Uh, by all means, if you want to reach out to us, uh, you, can, you can definitely do so uh, through our website, multiple social media channels, uh, we really enjoy interacting with you. Uh, we know that a lot of you leave comments on our YouTube videos and our Facebook page and, um, uh, and, and so on. And uh, we, uh, we love that interaction, so please keep it coming. And uh, as Jean mentioned in his uh, presentation, we truly appreciate the feedback and seek to uh, produce a product that meets your needs. And so that interaction is uh, very, very important to us. Um, so thank you. Uh, one and all for attending today once again on behalf of Jean and everyone here at PCI Geomatics. Uh, we appreciate your support and we hope to see you soon.